Hello dear students, the topic for today's lecture is DNA replication in eukaryotes. Let's first introduce the topic. Cells are the structural and functional units of all living organisms. Almost all living cells have either a nucleus or a nucleoid in which the genome that is complete set of genes composed of DNA is stored and replicated. Cells with nuclear envelope are called eukaryotes and those without nuclear envelope are prokaryotes. DNA molecules are very much longer than the cells themselves and are tightly packed and folded within the nucleus as supramolecular complexes of DNA with specific proteins. Nucleic acids and their composition. Nucleic acids are the most important constituents of the nucleus having the ability to store and transmit genetic information from one generation to the next. There are two types of nucleic acids. One, deoxyribose nucleic acid or DNA and ribose nucleic acid or RNA. Both constitute the genetic material in different organisms and DNA is the predominant genetic material in most of the organisms. Nucleic acid molecule is a long chain polymer that is polynucleotide composed of monomeric units called nucleotides. A nucleotide has three characteristic components. One, a nitrogenous base. Two, a pentose sugar and 3 a phosphate group. The nitrogenous base is of two types pyrimidine and purine. The structure of pyrimidine reveals that it has a basic six member ring of benzene in which the carbon atoms at position 1 and 3 are replaced by nitrogen. Pyrimidines are of three types, one thymine, two cytosine and three uracil. Thymine and cytosine are found in DNA, whereas cytosine and uracil are found in RNA. The purine has a double ringed structure that is a five member imidazole ring is attached to the six member benzene ring. Purines are of two types, one adenine and two guanine. Sugar which is the second component of nucleotide is ribose in case of RNA and deoxyribose in case of DNA. A ribose is a five member carbon ring which consists of four carbon atoms while the fifth carbon is outside the ring. In deoxyribose an oxygen atom is missing at position 2 and hence the name deoxyribose. A nitrogen base coupled with sugar forms a nucleoside. By the addition of phosphoric acid molecule to a nucleoside a nucleotide is formed. The phosphate group is linked to the two sugar molecules above and below at carbon number 3 or at carbon number 5. When a number of nucleotide monomer units join through the formation of phosphodiester bonds that is involving two ester bonds, a polynucleotide chain is formed. All phosphodiester linkages in DNA strand have same orientation along the chain, giving each nucleic acid strand a specific polarity and a distinct 5 prime and 3 prime ends. The 5 prime end lacks a nucleotide at the 5 prime position and 
the three prime end lacks a nucleotide at the three prime position. Besides being complementary, the two strands of DNA are antiparallel, that is, oriented in opposite directions. This directionality is important in DNA synthesis because DNA polymerase can only synthesize DNA in one direction by adding nucleotides to the three prime end of a DNA strand. Structure of deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. Structure of DNA was discovered by J. D. Watson and F. H. C. Crick in 1953. The work of Watson and Crick has been supported by X-ray diffraction picture obtained by Wilkins and his associates. On the basis of studies of chemical analysis and X-ray crystallography, the most important features of DNA molecule are as 1. DNA consists of a double helix in which two polynucleotide chains are coiled about the same axis in such a way that they can be separated from one another only by uncoiling and not by lateral separation. 2. The two polynucleotide chains run in opposite directions and have complementary base sequences. Since adenine is linked to thymine and cytosine to guanine. 3. Bases in DNA double helix are set at right angles to the long axis. 4. DNA double helix has a diameter of 20 angstroms and a pitch that is one round or of about 34 angstroms. Distance between the two base pairs is 3.4 angstroms and there are 10 base pairs in each turn. Importance of DNA. Following few points uh, reveal that how important DNA is. 1. DNA is necessary to make all the RNA and proteins needed for cells to carry out necessary reactions and cellular processes. 2. DNA is essential for evolution. 3. DNA is a fairly conservative molecule and hence it provides stability to the characters of a population. 4. We need DNA to pass down our genes to our offsprings. 5. DNA stores genetic information, preserves beneficial genes and regulates cellular activity. 6. DNA defines who and what we are in the world. Without it, we would all be the same. DNA replication. The most significant feature of DNA molecule is its capacity to make its own identical copies. This property is called replication. DNA replication is a process wherein each strand of the original double-stranded DNA molecule serves as a template for the reproduction of the complementary strand. Therefore, DNA replication results into two identical DNA molecules produced from one double-stranded DNA molecule. Watson and Crick's structure of DNA made it clear how it could act as template for the reproduction and transmission of genetic information. The strict base pairing rules within a DNA double helix means that the use of one strand as a template will result in another strand with a predictable complementary sequence. DNA replication can be studied under six headings. One, enzymes involved in DNA replication. Two, RNA primers and their role in DNA replication. Three, unwinding of DNA. Four, semi-conservative DNA replication. Five, mechanism of 
DNA replication. Six, direction of DNA replication or synthesis. Let's begin with the first heading that is enzymes involved in DNA replication. DNA polymerases are the major enzymes involved in DNA replication and they carry out all forms of DNA replication. A DNA polymerase cannot begin a new DNA strand synthesis. However, it can only extend an existing DNA strand. Three types of DNA polymerases are involved in eukaryotic DNA replication. One, polymerase alpha. Two, polymerase delta. And three, polymerase epsilon. Polymerase alpha elongates the primer and is involved in the synthesis of a leading strand. Polymerase delta has a leading role in the lagging strand synthesis. Polymerase epsilon is involved in the leading strand elongation besides polymerase alpha. Both polymerase alpha and polymerase epsilon are highly processive and have proofreading that is 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity. RNA primers and their role in DNA replication. DNA polymerase enzymes can initiate DNA synthesis only if there is RNA primer. This primer is a short piece of RNA that is an oligonucleotide onto which deoxyribonucleotides are added. It is synthesized first at 5 prime end and serves as a primer for DNA synthesis. RNA primers are synthesized by a DNA dependent RNA polymerase called primase. Primases can initiate a new polynucleotide strand complementary to a template strand and they themselves do not require a primer. Primer is synthesized from the primase using single stranded DNA as template. DNA polymerase delta uses short stretch of available RNA to initiate DNA synthesis in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. The 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity of DNA polymerase delta removes the RNA primer from, from the newly synthesized DNA strand. Unwinding of DNA. The DNA must unwind to expose the single strands in order to proceed for the replication. The initiator proteins, also called origin recognition complex, bind to the double-stranded DNA at the origin of replication, which are usually adenine and thymine-rich portions. Initiator proteins lightly unwind the DNA using energy from adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Enzyme helicase continues the unwinding after being attached to the unwound DNA. Enzyme topoisomerase promotes the separation of strands by enabling strands to swivel or supin around each other to remove the buildup of twists. Single strand binding proteins also called SSB maintain the separation of strands and allow them to serve as templates. SSB proteins also stabilizes the unwound region and at this stage a replication fork is evidenced. Enzyme primase binds to the first priming sequence on the template strand and synthesizes a short RNA primer that is complementary to the DNA template. DNA polymerase delta uses the primer to initiate DNA synthesis by adding 
deoxyribonucleotides to its three prime end. As DNA synthesis is continuous in the five prime to three prime direction, the leading strand requires only one priming event. Next, RNA primer is made for the lagging strand and DNA polymerase alpha extends the strand. DNA synthesis is uh, discontinuous in the lagging strand and hence requires a series of RNA primers. DNA in a lagging strand is synthesized at the three prime end of each primer, generating an Okazaki fragment that grows until it meets the adjacent Okazaki fragment. The RNA primer is then removed by the 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity of DNA polymerase delta and is replaced with DNA by the polymerase activity of the same enzyme. The adjacent Okazaki fragments are linked together with covalent phosphoester bonds by the enzyme DNA ligase semi-conservative DNA replication. In semi-conservative replication, each DNA strand serves as a template for the synthesis of new strand. As a result, two new DNA molecules will be formed, each with one new strand and one old strand. Watson and Crick proposed the hypothesis of semi-conservative DNA replication which was proved by the experiments of Misselson and Stahl in 1958. Misselson and Stahl grew Escherichia coli or E. coli cells for many generations in a medium containing the heavy isotope of nitrogen that is N15 instead of normal light isotope of nitrogen that is N14. These cells were then transferred to fresh medium containing only the N14 isotope. Here they were grown till the doubling of their population. The DNA isolated from these first generation cells formed a band in cesium chloride gradient at a position indicating that a double helical DNAs of the daughter cells were hybrids that is containing one new N14 strand and one old or parental N15 strand. Mechanism of DNA replication. DNA replication takes place during the S phase or synthetic phase of the interphase between two mitotic cycles. In this phase, the amount of DNA doubles. The individual unit of replication in a DNA is called a replicon. A replicon is a self-replicating segment of a DNA in a chromosome that includes an origin from which replication proceeds bidirectionally. An eukaryotic chromosome possesses a large number of replicons, whereas prokaryotes usually have a single replicon. Replicons grow with the advancement of replication folks in both directions. The individual replicons meet and fuse while the replication fork approaches the end of DNA. Lastly, the two daughter DNA molecules separate after the fusion of replicons. The replication of DNA must be complete and carried out with high reliability to maintain genetic stability. This process is complex and involves many cellular functions to ensure fidelity in replication. Direction of DNA replication or synthesis. A new strand of DNA is always synthesized in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction, that is Nucleotides matched to the template strand are added to the 3 prime end via creation of phosphodiester bond by DNA polymerase. 
as the two strands are anti parallel the strand acting as template is being read from its 3 prime end towards its 5 prime end the energy for this process of dna polymerization comes from two of the three total phosphates attached to each unincorporated base when a nucleotide is being added to a growing dna strand two of the phosphates are removed and the energy produced creates a phosphodiester bond that attaches the remaining phosphate to the growing chain this mechanism of energy requirement for the process of dna replication also helps explain the directionality of dna synthesis the synthesis at a replication four is continuous in the direction of fork moment for one strand but discontinuous in the opposite direction for the other strand resulting in the formation of a leading and lagging strands respectively a le leading dna strand is the one where the replication fork moves along it in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction and to which nucleotides can be added continuously as it is growing in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction a lagging strand is so oriented that the replication fork moves along it in a 5 prime to 3 prime manner this orientation is opposite to the working orientation of dna polymerase which moves on a template in 3 prime to 5 prime manner lagging strand grows by the synthesis of short pieces in the reverse direction these short pieces that serve as replication intermediates for the lagging strand were first described by Reiji Okazaki and hence are called Okazaki fragments. Polymerase alpha is the main DNA polymerase for the synthesis of a lagging strand while as polymerase delta works on the leading strand. Merits of DNA replication DNA replication is important because it ensures that every cell in the body contains a complete and identical genome. The DNA replication allows the offsprings to have a different combination of DNA than its parents through recombination of the parental DNA during meiosis. Also, DNA replication ensures variations which are critical for species survival in nature. To conclude, it is worth to mention that DNA polymerase cannot replicate the terminal DNA segment of lagging strand in eukaryotic chromosomes. This is because of the linear nature of eukaryotic chromosome. This single stranded terminal end which is called telomere of the lagging strand will be removed by some exonuclease enzymes. If there is no mechanism to replicate the telomere region, the chromosomes will become shortened and shortened in each round of replication. This chromosome shortening is a normal process in eukaryotic somatic cells as they divide only a certain number of times before the DNA loss prevents their further division. This phenomenon is known as hayphilic limit. But within the germ cell line, which transmits DNA to the next generation, an enzyme namely telomerase extends the repetitive sequence of the telomere region to prevent its degradation or shortening. Rarely, this enzyme that is telomerase may become active in somatic cells leading to cancer formation. Ok students, here in this lecture we learned about the DNA structure. We came to know 
why DNA is important and how DNA replicates and also we found that DNA replication is of utmost importance. With this, we come to the conclusion of this lecture.